Hmm. I wonder where can I find a power supply and maybe a case? I don't know. I have a build coming up later. They have joked about sending me a pallet with just one case and I hope they don't because I have no room but this is this is great to see and walk around nice little warehouse hello good people I'm Dimitri welcome to another video recently I had a chance to visit be quiet's headquarters in Germany it's very interesting to see how the products are designed and by whom and how they are tested with particular focus on power supplies and how they make sure to deliver a quality product undebatable power supplies are less exciting than let's say graphics cards but we as PC users have this understanding that having a quality PSU is absolutely crucial and be quiet decided to sponsor this video on how to choose the right power supply for you but anything that you hear in this video can be applied to any power supply from any vendor this is just an educational piece just for you of course their HQ is absolutely loaded with all types of power supply testing equipment but one really interesting you know experiment I got to observe was with a particular system so they had a crossfire configuration with the AMD 295x2 cards essentially four GPUs stressed to 100% with 4 mark at 4k resolution running off a 1000 watt power supply and we were consuming around 1100 and 10 watts for this system so that's kind of crazy now you wonder why somebody would want a thousand watt power supply because you got two gpus that really want all that power and uh, here's a little interesting timbit after switching the resolution to 1080p instead of 4k remember we're running four gpus in here and we're running right now at 443 watts so that was pretty fascinating just to see you know that whole system consuming 1100 watts with those cards but then dropping down resolution and just how much you know, lower power consumption, the whole system became. So that is a perfect segue on how much power do you actually need? Many manufacturers like Be Quiet have a PSU calculator on their website to get you started. And this will allow you to put in your components and it will calculate how much power is needed. The intent is not to overbuy, but ensure you understand that getting a bit of extra capacity from your PSU will certainly help with future upgrades and then overclocking, for example. And this is actually quite important for new builders because I remember building my first system like seven years ago and thinking that I need a thousand watts for a single GPU system. Obviously I wasn't totally understanding what I was doing back then, but uh, just gets you started and that whole PSU calculator is a nice guideline just how much power you need. Now, when it comes to size, normally this is not something to necessarily worry about as most modern cases have that nice, large and open PSU section, but some smaller cases will not fit large power supplies like the Dark Power Pro series, even though the case may be able to fit all kinds of high-end components. I have encountered some incompatibility with the larger power supply as you need to insert it on an angle because of the, how the frame is designed on some smaller cases. So that's something to keep in mind. On the other hand, some small Smaller PSUs, SFX in particular, may not have the necessary cable length to reach certain areas in a standard mid tower or full tower. So the happy medium would be something like this, the Be Quiet Pure Power 11. It's 160 millimeters in length, it's semi-modular design and available up to 700 watts. Next up are cables. This is particularly important to make sure the cables are long enough to fit your chosen case. And there's usually a cable length chart, uh, like with Be Quiet, for example, so you can see exactly how long uh, each of those cables are. Normally with larger and more premium power supplies you have slightly longer cables which is great but I would say like cable lengths for all power supplies and case layout have sort of standardized to a point where you don't really have to worry about the main connections like the 24 pin and the 8 pin and the PCIe but I have encountered sometimes SATA cables not being long enough to reach certain sections of the case like if you're mounting a hard drive on one of the corners for the cases then it's uh, it might be a difficult reach and it's usually quite easy to bunch up any unused length but for larger enclosures like the dark base pro 900 rev 2 it is best to have very long cables to make sure to reach all parts of the enclosure also are the cables braided or flat i prefer personally flat cables when working inside itx cases or when spacing behind the motherboard is very tight while braided cables generally look better inside the main chamber but are slightly chunkier next up is modularity and we have three different types a fully modular unit example is the be quiet straight power series Series, every cable can be removed or added and it's interesting if you want a PSU with dual 8 pins for future expansion but only need one right now you do 
you'll pay more for a fully modular IO, even though you always need, you know, certain cables like a 24 pin and the eight pin CPU cable. And most of the time, at least one six pin PCIe. And the disadvantage of a fully modular unit, in my example, like I don't use 60 to 70% of all the provided cables with the power supply. And they're just like left in the back somewhere. And number two, because of how the connections are spread throughout the uh, unit, it expands the length of the power supply. Next up is a partially modular unit, the Dark Pro series, for example. So most use connections uh, like the 24 pin and the eight pin CPU and some GPU cables may be hardwired and can generally cost a bit less than the fully modular unit. The downfall is that if you don't need some of those hardwired cables, then you will need to find a place to hide them. And this can be an issue in some smaller cases. And then the non-modular units like the system power from Be Quiet, typically it's the least expensive option. So it's good to remain on a budget. You know, you have no modular cables and the issue is that you have to find place for a ton of cables. But since everything exits from one side, you essentially are clearing up room for long graphics cards. If the power supply, let's say is installed on front of the case, which uh, happens to be quite often for ITX systems. And I actually prefer using like a non-modular power supply uh, in tiny cases so that I can clear up some of that extra space for usually a graphics card. Next up, let's talk about efficiency, which is a key element in choosing of a power supply. And efficiency is determined based on how much input power is needed to supply a given output power amount. For example, even though your components may require 400 watts, an inefficient power supply may need to draw up to 500 watts from the wall, while a more efficient one may only need 450 watts from the wall. Over time, this can make a big difference. And more efficient power supplies will run quieter and cooler generally because less of that power loss is converted to heat. So what we're doing now is doing power supply efficiency testing and trying to estimate exactly how much wattage we will be consuming with a gold uh, power supply versus a bronze efficiency. So right now we have a gold power supply in there. We have Prime 95 running with um, uh, four mark at 100% and we're consuming just under 300 watts with a 650 watt power supply So we're measuring exactly how much we're pulling from the wall So we did just jump over 300 watt consumption and that is because the components are getting hot They're getting less efficient and so now we switched out the power supply for a bronze efficiency This one's a 400 watt unit. Uh, we are running 8700 K GTX 1070 Ti uh, Prime 95 on eight cores uh, so we can fully take advantage of 100% load or close to 100% with four mark um, and uh, Hopefully we can see some efficiency differences between bronze and the previous one was gold And so with the bronze efficiency unit We were pulling close to 340 watts from the wall instead of 315 watts with a gold efficiency unit And this was just a cool experiment to see the power draw increase as components get hotter and also that whole Efficiency variable between bronze and gold and how in fact we were consuming more power from the wall with a bronze power supply And next let's talk about the 80 plus certification So typical efficiency for power supplies used to look like a bell curve the chart here is you know it's a dramatization and we use a thousand watt output as an example but this is what it shows typically at low and very high outputs efficiency is lower there's that sweet spot somewhere in the middle where efficiency is the highest and this is bad because whatever capacity power supply you have it will only operate at the peak efficiency at only a slim output range uh, when it comes to load. And so 80 plus basically sets that baseline minimum efficiency of 80% plus at different output levels. Titanium is the newest and it also adds a minimum rating of 10% output. This is pretty important for systems that are at idle, uh, you know, majority of the time. And usually the 80 plus rating aligns with that to the pricing of the power supply, but not always. Now let's talk about something actually quite important, understanding the label. This label here is from the Dark Power Pro 850 watts. Starting with the AC input at the top, it is rated for 100 volts to 240 volts, which means it can be used in both North America and countries that use the 240 volt power. Below that will be DC output. What power supplies do is take your household AC current and convert it to five different DC voltages, 3.3 volts, 5 volts, 12 volts, negative 12 volts, and 5 VSB. We'll talk about the first three since the 5 VSB is used for system stability and negative 12 volts is for some legacy PCI devices. So both the 3.3 volt and 5 volt outputs are used for SATA and MOLX connections, some controllers on motherboards, as well as memory. It is able to output about 140 watts to those 
3.3 and 5 volt outputs. Typically, you don't really need that much power for the 3.3 volts and the 5 volt outputs, as modern PCs generally require the 12 volt power. Which brings us to the 12 volt section. A high 12 volt value is very important since your most power hungry devices like the processor and graphics card require mostly 12 volt power. Some power supplies have a single 12 volt rail or partition, and in the case with our 850 watt power supply, it has multiple 12 volt rails. So neither one is right or wrong, but in the case with our Dark Power Pro 850 watts, you can see that each rail has either a 35 amp 420 watt limit or a 30 amp 360 watt limit. And if more power than that is drawn from a single rail, then overcurrent protection will kick in. The likelihood of that happening is you know, very slim, but it makes sense for overclockers and really for individuals who are pushing their hardware to have a single large 12 volt rail. So you can really channel all that power towards uh, that hardware without having power wattage deficit for that single 12 volt rail. One other thing to mention is that the overcurrent protection on multi-rail PSUs could protect components in some situations. Meanwhile, a multi-rail design also follows the ATX spec while single rail units don't. And you can see with this example, Example, almost all of the power supply's power can be dedicated to 12 volt rail, about 840 watts. And that's a good thing when overclocking and making sure that your main components just get enough power. And this whole label breakdown is actually quite important. And you know, maybe check it out next time you're buying a power supply to see what type of 12 volt rail configuration has, single, large one, or multiple, and how much power can be uh, allocated for the 12 volt in total versus how much is going to your 3.3 and 5 volt outputs. Now we're not telling you which power supply to buy, but use all the guidelines we discussed today to help your buying decision and you know avoid all the bling like RGB power supply things and wattage monitoring, all the kind of like useless things for a power supply uh, because obviously they add to the cost. Now the whole efficiency level for power supply, you know that's more important for high wattage systems that are running at low uh, most of the time. But that is not to say that you don't need a titanium efficiency power supply for your single GPU system. It's just that the savings that you'll get at the end of the year for your power bill may just not be significant. But an immediate benefit, of course, is that your power supply will be running cooler and quieter versus something that is uh, lower efficiency. So big thanks to Be Quiet for sponsoring this video. Definitely use the PSU calculator to see how much power your system really needs versus what you thought it might need. I'm Dimitri, thanks for watching, powering off.